morning. morning. Welcome to Hollywood United Methodist Church. We are glad that you have joined us for worship today in person and online. Please stand for opening hymns.
reminds me of growing up in church. I think we sing those two songs every Sunday. All right, it's kids' moment. I know, I'm not Mr. Kevin. It's okay. Any kids in the congregation want to come down, sit on the stairs with me? Yay! Mr. Kevin's at home uh, recovering from a little procedure, and Miss April is out traveling, so you get me today. How about that? Yeah, they're very excited, I can tell. <laughs> so, um, so, hey, we got real loud real quick. Uh, Mr. Kevin gave me a few little notes to uh, go by, so I have a riddle for you, maybe a question. Okay, what is something you cannot see, but you can feel? Oh, we got multiple answers. We'll go with you. Love. <laughs> God. Oh, wow. All three of those were amazing answers, but one of them we're talking about today in Children's Church. Did you know about that? <laughs> she knew. All right, it is air that I was, the question I was looking for. Um, so what happens if we don't have this invisible stuff? Yeah? We would die. <laughs> yes, that is the, uh, the outcome. Do you have another? <laughs> we die because we can't breathe because the air has the stuff we need to live. Yeah, there's oxygen in it, right? Yeah. Okay, so, yes. I mean, can you hold your breath for a little bit, but you can't hold it for a long time, right? Do you want to try real quick? All right, let's do it. <sighs> oh, my God. Okay, you win, you win. I like oxygen too much. Um, all right. I know you did. You, you all did, actually. And I'm, I'm supposed to be a runner. All right. Um, today in Children's Church, guess what we're talking about? I'm going to talk about how everything living needs air. And that how our breath, you know, the breath we just took and held in, is a sign of God's spirit. And, you know, because God's spirit is something we can't see, Right? but it's something we can feel and, and, and sense. So it's kind of like the air we breathe. Yeah? All right. So let's do a quick prayer for our kids today, and um, then we'll go up to Children's Church. Dear Lord, thank you for these children and the work you're doing in their lives. Please allow them to feel your work with your spirit in their lives as they grow up and become people who will follow in your footsteps. Be with them today and every day. And all God's children said, Amen. All right. Okay. Now let's go off to Children's Church. Uh, parents, you can pick the kids up in Grant Hall, of course, as always. And then while they're leaving, let's all stand up and greet each other with the peace of Christ. Yes. And before you all sit down, let's wave up at our production team up there. And then normally there's a little red light flashing at the camera that has everybody watching online. Hello. We miss you. All right. <laughs> As we uh, get ready, prepare ourselves for a time of prayer. Let's take a moment, if, if you will, to uh, just rest in the presence of God. Sit back, take a deep, calming breath, and let's listen to the words of our chancel choir as they lead us into prayer.
Let us pray. Creator God, on this beautiful Sunday, it's with grateful hearts we acknowledge your amazing power and work in our lives. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your care, your mercy, and your grace. Thank you that you're always with us and will never leave us. As we begin this new month this week, refresh us. Invite us to discover your presence in each person who crosses our path and even in the undertaking of ordinary daily tasks. Gift us with simple joy. We come before you today to lift up the prayers of our church family. We pray for Nancy, Mikey, Donna, Stephanie, Tom's mother, and the Calvert family. Continued prayers for Mark, Sylvia, and the Lincoln family on the passing of loved ones. We prayerfully ask for your continued strength and renewal of spirit during these seasons of loss and overwhelming life changes that seem too much to handle. Please give us the wisdom and the understanding to patiently listen to your guidance. We also pray for our denomination, the General Conference of Churches meeting this week in North Carolina. We pray for your powerful and radical love to be felt throughout the week, and that this church body will complete the work to be fully inclusive and affirming of our LGBTQ plus family. Now knowing you're always with us and listening to us, may we individually lift up to you the concerns, challenges, and praises of our hearts in a moment of silent prayer. Lord, we thank you for the power of your grace you continually give to us. We seek your hand in our physical, emotional, and spiritual healing. May you work in us so that we may find comfort and hope as we rest in your presence. And now we offer the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our creator, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. You get me for another five minutes. <laughs> I just told John I was uh, coming after his job next, and he said, no, you're not. <laughs> he won't let me touch the organ. <laughs> ah, good to see all your smiling faces today. So let's check in, shall we? This is where you get your phone out, scan that QR code that's up there, tell me who you are or that you're here. Um, and if, if you're a first-time person, um, feel free to drop your email in there if you want to be a part of our email list. Also, there's a place for prayer requests in there if you have any prayer requests you'd like to share with the pastoral team. Uh, and also, if you are a new person, um, thank you for sharing your morning with us. And stop by the welcome table in the courtyard and see me afterwards. I have a little welcome bag for you uh, to give to you. So, uh, it, if you haven't grabbed one yet, I've been talking about this for two months, but grab an event flyer. This has everything or some of the bigger events coming up in the next few months. You can take that home with you and put it on your fridge. That's what my mom used to do. Um, today, we have our Sunday adult study group um, meeting. That's the, Tim likes to call it Sunday school. 
You can call it whatever you want. Uh, but Tim and Reved's class will be meeting in the chapel at 1215 after church. And then a couple things coming up next weekend. Saturday, May 4th, we are going to help make tamales for an organization called Nino, which is the Northeast Neighborhood Outreach. I got it right this time. <laughs> Matt gave me the thumbs up. Uh, so that's happening at 1 o'clock. It's for just a couple hours in our kitchen in the back. We'll be some steaming and making tamales. So if you can help out with that, please show up. And you just go to the back gate, um, which is kind of, we call it the Oaks Gate, but it's the gate by the gym in the back, and we'll let you in back there. Also May 5th, the next day, which is Sunday, we're going to be doing a blessing bag build. And we could use as many hands as possible because we're going to create over 500 bags for the summertime that we will be able to give out uh, individually. You guys can take some home and put them in your car. Um, but give out to people in need over the summertime. So if you can help out with that, we're doing that directly after church in the gym next Sunday. And then something to put on your calendar, it's also on your little event flyer, Mother's Day brunch. We're going to be celebrating all the motherly figures in our lives with a brunch on that day. Uh, and also, if you can, please bring a picture of the person you want to celebrate and put it on the altar before church. Um, we're going to have a little Mother's Day altar um, display of, uh, I think, we, oh yeah, we have it from last year up there. So it was really, really cute. And uh, some people brought some great pictures of the mother figures in their lives. So be a part of that if you can in two weeks. Okay, everything we're doing today, if you have any questions, you can just come out and see me in the courtyard afterwards. I'll be by the welcome table. But we do have a lot of great things coming up over the next few months. And uh, all of those things, all the outreach all the volunteer opportunities and events all happen because of you. Through your prayers, your presence, your service, volunteering, and also your gifts. So as the ushers come forward and we put up a QR code for online giving, please give as you're able so we can continue to grow this ministry here in the heart of Hollywood. Thank you for being here today.
reading from the Gospel according to John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. Receive what the Spirit is saying. There's a gray river of doubt between my head and my heart. They say seeing is believing, but I only see myself reflected in the current of the great unknown. I need a savior to carry my head and heart. Today we continue our Eastertide sermon series, Wrestling with Doubt, Finding Faith. Everyone has doubts. Often we treat our questions as the enemy of faith, but uncertainty does not mean that our belief is lacking. Doubt can be a path to, dis to a deeper and richer encounter with God. Now last week we didn't just wrestle with doubt, but we wrestled with the concept of hell. So today we are wrestling with heaven. Is it real? Will St. Peter really meet us at the pearly gates? Is it like I often share at memorial service? Is heaven a great big old Methodist style coffee hour made even more magnificent by being in the presence of God? Or is heaven, as Belinda Carlisle claims, is heaven a place on earth? Okay, that's as good as the jokes get in this one, so I'm just <laughs> saying right there. Or as it was described yesterday at the Drag Queen World Series where I offered the invocation, is heaven our loved ones playing in the big field above? Journalist Lisa Miller in the introduction to her book Heaven, our enduring fascination with the afterlife, wrote that the idea of heaven defies logic, but in my mind it represents hope, and I believe in hope. A 2021 Pew study found that 73% of Americans believe in heaven, including 26% of agnostics and 3% of atheists. You see, even if you atheists believe that there's a place of love and happiness and joy after this life. <clears throat> Within the Jewish and Christian scriptures, like our conversation last week about judgment and hell, we can see how views of heaven have evolved over time. The Israelites had little interest in speculating about Sheol, later known as Hades, the place of the dead. But there are glimpses of the afterlife in the Old Testament. Isaiah 25 gives us a beautiful and hopeful picture of the defeat of death and presumably a glimpse into the afterlife that is follows. Writing, on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from the earth. For the Lord has spoken." Adam Hamilton, the writer of this series, notes that this passage is alluded to three times in the New Testament with reference to heaven, in 1 Corinthians and in the Revelation to John. Now, most of the references that Jesus makes to heaven are about the dwelling place where God's will is done. Just as when we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Jesus' interest is not necessarily on, focus, on people going to heaven. Rather, his focus on how we might be a part of heaven experienced on earth as we do God's will, loving God and loving our neighbors. In our gospel lesson for this morning, Jesus is with his disciples at the Last Supper. 
in the beginning of what John calls his farewell discourses from John 14 through John 17, Jesus is trying to prepare the disciples for his impending death and then his resurrection. Jesus knows that the disciples are about to have their hearts broken on what is to come. They've been family together for the past three years. They left their biological families to follow Jesus and to build the beloved community. And in just a little while, he will be gone from them. Jesus wants to prepare them so that they won't be overwhelmed, but that they can find their way through for the long term. Jesus starts with words of comfort and an immediate call to faith. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house, it has room to spare. In other words, don't let the pain and the grief that you are experiencing to cause you to trust any less in God or in me. Yeah, things are going to change. I'm going on ahead to prepare a place for you because where I'm going, you're going to be someday too. And when I go to prepare a place for you, guess what? I'm coming back and I'm going to take you with me so that where I am, heaven, you will be also. And in the meantime, you don't need to worry because the Holy Spirit that our children's sermons pointed out today will be with you always. And a little later in the gospel, because peace I leave with you, my peace, Jesus says, I give to you. I don't give to you as the world gives. So when you are experiencing uncertainty and change, when you're in the midst of pain and grief, Jesus says, my peace the peace I give to you, it's different than anything else. It's a transforming peace. It's a peace that will allow us to move through our grief to hope and to love again. It's the peace that says, even in the face of death, hold fast to your faith in God who created you, who loves you, who longs to hold you and comfort you like a parent comforts a child. It's the peace that I think of as God's spirit surrounding us, enveloping us from head to toe, assuring us of God's love, no matter how hurt our hearts might be. When we claim the peace that Christ gives us, the peace that is not of this world but is of God, we have something to hold on to. We have the power of the risen Christ. We have the reality of heaven that gives us hope. Christ tells us that just because he isn't here on earth with us physically doesn't mean that we are orphans. He tells us he's coming to us day by day in ways we can't begin to imagine, helping to co-create the story of our lives with us. Hamilton writes that I cannot prove the resurrection of Christ occurred, but I can point to the change that happened in the disciples once they had seen the risen Christ. They went from cowering in fear, in hiding, to proclaiming Christ in the streets. I can say with Paul that over 500 people claimed to have seen the risen Christ. And then there was Paul's own testimony. He had begun his career persecuting Christians. But after encountering the risen Christ, he was radically converted and became an apostle for the faith. Christ's resurrection and the Bible's words lay a foundation for believing in an afterlife for believing in heaven. Family, we're mortals, all of us. And until we face the fact of our own mortality, we can't really begin to live. We live in a state of perpetual anxiety. The great 20th century theologian Paul Tillich defined anxiety as the state in which a being is aware of its possible non-being. Like all other animals, we will die. Unlike other animals, as far as we know, we know, we know that one day we will die. That is our dilemma. But it's also our hope. Because it's the knowledge of our own mortality that causes us to ask the ultimate questions about the meaning of life and death. Tillich said that there are several questions which every human being must ask and answer in order to be truly human. What is the meaning of life? 
Where do we come from? Where do we go? What shall we become in the short space between birth and death? And the gospel comes to us in the good news that we come from God and we go to God and with one another. And in between, rather, we are to live in love with God and with one another. On this, we can bet our lives. If it were not so, would I tell you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare that place for you, I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. And there are some other words of comfort. Martin Luther, the great Protestant Reformation leader, believed that our pets will join us in heaven too, writing, Be thou comforted, little dog, thou too in resurrection shall have a little golden tail. I'll close with a story about an old country doctor who made his rounds in his old truck. He had his dog with him as he went to visit patients, and he stopped at one house to visit a man who was on hospice, dying of cancer. He entered the man's bedroom to check on him, and the man asked the doctor, how am I doing? And the doctor replied, it, it doesn't look good. And they were both quiet for a few moments. Then the man asked, doctor, what is it like to die? The doctor sat there for a moment, trying to think of something to say to the man. As he was thinking, he heard his dog come up the stairs of the house, and because the bedroom door was shut, he couldn't get into the room. So, as dogs will do, the dog started to whine and to scratch at the door. And the doctor said to the man, you hear my dog outside the door? He's never been in this house before. He's never been in this room before. He doesn't know what's on the other side, but he knows one thing. The person who loves him is in here. Because he knows that, everything is all right. And then he said, the doctor said, and that is what death is like. We've never been there. We don't know what is on the other side. But one thing we do know, love is there. And because of that, everything is all right. Don't let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid, because heaven is real. Amen.
following the postlude, if you would like to receive communion, I will be here consecrating it. Please make your way to the front two rows uh, and to receive. You don't have to be a member of this church or of any church. You simply have to have the desire to receive. So go now knowing that heaven really is both a place on earth and it is a place that is real beyond this life into the life to come. So go forth this day to love and serve the world. Amen. <laughs>